I think that there is tremendous power and hope to this idea of collective impact. We have worked for decades and decades to help make progress on social problems. We have contributed hundreds of billions of dollars. In the U.S., $300 billion a year in charitable contributions. And yet we haven't made progress. And we haven't made progress, I believe, because we've followed this model of focusing on a single individual organization to come up with the solution to a problem. But any major social problem is deeply impacted by government, is deeply impacted by for-profit business, and is certainly affected as well by the volunteers and the nonprofit sector. It's only when we get all of these sectors working together that we can really achieve meaningful progress on these problems. You know, I think the reason that collective impact has really resonated around the world is because those of us that have been involved in the social sector can relate to this notion of isolated impact and the fact that we're not really being able to achieve, you know, progress at scale against any issue uh, because, you know, there are too many different organizations, whether they're foundations or corporations or nonprofits, NGOs or the government, that aren't working together. When I think about the power of collective impact for transformational change, I think about the work that some of my FSG colleagues did around the reform of the juvenile justice system in New York State. And when we started that work in late 2009, this was a system that was broken in the sense that it was inefficient and ineffective, both for the kids in the system and also for their communities. One of the things that we have seen is that this system, which includes literally hundreds of public and private agencies that span the courts, law enforcement, child welfare, um, probation, county services, and multiply that across 64 counties across the state, are really very uncoordinated. Uh, in addition to that, they need to interface with nonprofits, with education organizations, with child welfare and support, so that the youth can get the, need, the support that they need while they're incarcerated and then are released back effectively into their communities. None of that's happening right now. And when I say the system is broken, there's really no single intervention that alone is going to solve that problem. So enacting a single law, re-engineering a single state agency, scaling up a single nonprofit is not going to solve this problem. FSG is not in a position to be a backbone organization for uh, a collective impact initiative. We can't be working for years or a decade with a single group of organizations in a single region. But what FSG can do is lead that initial process of bringing organizations together, of helping to define the common agenda, of helping to build that sense of trust and collaboration across the different sectors and help develop that shared measurement system that enables organizations to measure progress together. Bringing about a collective impact initiative is not an easy thing to do. And many collective impact initiatives, I believe, will probably not succeed because it really is a very sensitive tool that depends a lot on the leadership that is behind it. So in this case, we had some real credible champions, uh, folks that were very senior in state agencies and in law enforcement and in advocacy organizations that were willing to go out on a limb and convene their colleagues to make a difference in the system. What we were able to do was, over the course of a year, to bring together the major organizations that touch youth in the juvenile justice system and help them to come to a common understanding of what the problem is and also a common vision for what they're looking for in terms of both youth success and in terms of public safety. There were a group of eight different funders that came together to fund a process for bringing these different groups together uh, and coming up with a common agenda and, and common measures for success. And you also, for the first time, are seeing the heads of state agencies, criminal justice, child welfare, and education, that have never worked together, meeting on a regular basis to solve these issues. Um, in addition to some really powerful legislation that's coming through now that includes some of the recommendations that we came to through the steering committee. You know, it's just, it's not easy work. It's extremely painful work. It's extremely political in many cases. But being able to get beyond the politics and the individual walls of an organization to true systems change is really what collective impact is all about. 
Since the work that we did in New York State, we've seen some really significant changes in the way that this system is working more effectively. We now see a backbone organization or a coordinating entity that sits inside of the governor's office. And the many different stakeholders that work across the system are now meeting on a regular basis and working more effectively together. We've also seen some major regulatory change that came about as a result of the recommendations of the steering committee. So in a relatively short period of time, we've seen some really significant shifts across a highly complex system that are really going to help New York State improve outcomes both for kids and for their communities. It's only by bringing these pieces together that we can really make progress on social problems. But by using these new tools and this new approach, I believe we can make more progress in solving social problems in the coming decade than we have in the last 50 or 100 years. And that is something that gives me great hope for the future.